they come across some interesting creatures on planet Earth when they get here, and uh, and they say, okay, well, we need to we need to get help. We need to get a low, much more of the gold out of the ground than we're getting right now. Because based on what the Sumerian tablets and the translations thereof tell us, there was only a small number of these, these Anunnaki that arrived on planet Earth. And it wasn't enough to get the gold out of the ground. I guess what I'm, trying, what I'm, what I'm confused about is, were there two different beings? Were there two different races? Or was it all the same species that came here? Well, in the beginning, I guess it was it was one species. The Anunnaki would be one species, and uh, and this is still the big the big question. You know, where do the different race groups on planet Earth come from? And that question hasn't been answered. It's something that we need to deal with. It's a very important problem that we need to get on top of. How do the different race groups fit and you know suddenly come out of this 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 uh, this picture. So it seems that there was a lot more cloning and manipulation that happened, you know, and this whole story that, you know, white people are white because they live further away from the equator and black people are black because they live more in the sun. I, that, that's just rubbish, you know. It's just, it doesn't wash with me. You know? It doesn't make very no, much sense. Make now, sense. throughout history, though, we've had things like the Minotaur and a lot of these, uh, I mean, even Bigfoot. You've got all these anomalies everywhere. Were these remnants of their genetically, of their genetic manipulation, um, you know, half reptiles, half human type entities, etc.? All their experiments. Yeah, it certainly seems like it. You know, I'm not sure how far your, your audience goes, but uh, it's important to to tap into every bit of information uh, when you do research. And I believe that you, as, as a researcher and a scientist in, in a world that we live in today, you've got to be open to everything, every area and every possible bit of information you get. What, what fascinates me on this planet is the diverse, many different races we have here. Is it because of environment and locale or... Are these all, I've always thought about this. Uh, the more we look at, at the different race groups on planet Earth, you know, we call ourselves the human race, but we're not one race. We're distinctly several different race groups. And uh, that becomes very interesting and often a very sensitive subject, but something that needs to be discussed openly without, you know, um, racial prejudice and, uh, and so forth. So it becomes more and more compelling um, the evidence is, becomes overwhelming that we are, we did not really evolve to this point in time. Um, we somehow were manipulated into this, into this point in time. There were, for, for a specific reason, no doubt. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, some evolutionists, Michael would say, George, don't use the word popped up. We, we evolved, yet it, it, it's pretty convincing that we kind of just showed up all of a sudden, isn't it? cradle of humankind that we that that is being sold to the world doesn't have any human skeletons in it we have hominids in there astropathicus uh, africanus and and uh, the miss mrs place and littlefoot and wonderful examples of over 500 fossils that have been excavated from the stagfontein caves just uh, sort of northwest of johannesburg um over 500 fossils, if, I, if I've got it right, uh, but they all hominids, no human skeletons there. So these are all the so, supposedly um, pre, pre-human um, evolutionary states. They are not human. And this has become a very hot political debate in South Africa because some people believe that you've become a racist and you've, you've, you're drawing racial lines. And it's got nothing to do with that. You just, you know, you've got to call it what it is. You've got to call it as you find it. You can't start becoming politically sensitive to one group or another. No, it's this is anthropology. Are, are these all various sex races from other extraterrestrials that have been here and, you know, they've manipulated in their own image? So the, uh, the Asian person, the Caucasian, the African... Uh, they are in the image of the extraterrestrial that came to this planet a long time ago. Have you ever thought of that? Yeah, absolutely. And, and once again, you, you obviously um, give this stuff a great deal of thought, and I think you put your finger right on the button one, one more time. Um, what, what, again, I, I look at this um, scientifically, genetically, and if we only appeared as a species 250,000 years ago, um, not enough time has passed for these different race groups to have evolved. 
and I don't care what anybody throws at you, it's just not going to happen because the, the strength of the genetic pool that keeps the Asian person Asian is so strong, it, it just doesn't make any sense. Um, and the same goes with, with African people. Um, the, the strength of the gene pool of African is defies the, the, the movement away from that into somebody like me who's got a little pale skin and, and gets burned when I run into the sun. You yeah, know? yeah. It, it doesn't make any sense. And there's not enough time that has is, that is passed on Earth for us to have evolved so dramatically into these three or four different, distinctly different race groups. And that's why when I, when I said earlier, we call ourselves the human race. Well, we're not really the human race because we are not one race group. We are three or four possibly more distinctly different race groups. But the, the, obvious, the obvious ones are the Caucasians, the, the Asians, the, the Chinese, I suppose. When I say Asian, I mean the, 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 the Chinese type um, mm -hmm. look. And then the, the, and the, the black African. And, and that is fascinating stuff because it is really, it becomes a melting pot of, of debate that what, what is interesting is, is earlier this year, I think it was in February, Craig Venter, the, the, the so-called father of the Human Genome Project, uh, gave a speech which blew everyone's mind. And it certainly blew my mind because he mentioned uh, some startling facts um, until very recently, we were all sold the, the story that all humans are 99.9% .9 genetically the same, right. identical. Well, that is no longer the case. Okay? With, the, with the Human Genome Project studies, they, they found out that between people and, and especially different race groups, there is up to a 2 or a 3% difference in their genetic structure. And that's he, that, that's a big difference, isn't it? It's a huge difference. It's almost, Michael, as if they all came from different places in the universe. That's certainly what it seems like. Uh, it seems like they might have been a prototype kind of person built here, and then another group of, of uh, by, by one group of extraterrestrial settlers for a specific purpose, the cloning of the humans by the Anunnaki, many of your listeners mm -hmm. will be very familiar with that. That seems to be a specific point in time and possibly with some of the earliest human manipulation or manipulation of, of this new species called Homo sapiens. We talk about just how we evolved on this planet. You know, we're, we're talking about the work of Zechariah Sitchin and his theories of the 12th planet. Uh, Robert uh, Safier does a uh, very thorough job trying to uh, coordinate all the various people who are talking about this. And it's growing, I think. It's growing and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger.